I'm Imogen, welcome back to my channel. I look so tanned and so blonde here. I'm, I'm up for this lighting. I can film here. Film a few videos in this time, this time day, what is it? It's quarter past four. Good filming time, apparently. So, this is my September TBR, which is kind of bitty. I'm currently in the process of getting ready to move to university. I go in two weeks tomorrow. So I'm trying to sort things out. Oh no, that's not a good sign. Every time my phone's gone off today, it's been like, oh, you got this, you got this, you got this. It's fine, I need to do a bank account and some DSA. Disabled student allowance stuff. So yeah. I know. That's a nice email. I'll deal with that later. Okay. So I'm going to start with the two books I have to read in the next two weeks because they are library books from where I live now and I'm literally moving. I'm moving from Kent to Cornwall. So from as far east as you can get along the south coast to as far west as you can get. So I have to finish these. First, I've actually started both of them. First is Sex and Rage, Raj, the Sex and Rage: Advice to Young Ladies Eager for a Good Time by Eve Babitz. I don't know if you can see that because there. I would not lie, I was drawn to this by the cover, but I am most of the way through. I have just over seventy pages left, so. I finished this this weekend actually and I'm really enjoying this. This is about Jacaranda who is in who at the start of this lives in Los Angeles during the 1970s. Her father works as a musician for I can't remember which one of the big Hollywood studios on their music so she's kind of grown up knowing people who are glamorous, she's got an aunt who's an actress and she's grown up on the beach because she's a surfer and it's about her life when she becomes entwined with this particular crowd of kind of glitzy, self-absorbed, beautiful people as they're called and her story, she, she kind of, she does a lot of things, she's painted surfboards to make a living before she's Xeroxed, which I've got no idea what that is, but it's a thing in here. And she does a bit of writing and it's her story and the writing in this is just beautiful. I love it. I'm really sad because I looked up her at in my library and in Kent they don't have any more of her books. They only have that one, so I won't be getting any more of those. And the next one we have is The Long Take by Robin Robertson, which was long listed for the Man Booker. It's a story told in verse. I'm currently grand total of page 14. It's only 250 pages, less than 250 pages long though. This is a noir narrative written with the intensity and power of poetry. The long take is one of the most remarkable and unclassifiable books of recent years. It's about Walker, who is a D-Day veteran has post-traumatic stress disorder and doesn't feel like he can go home to rural Nova Scotia. And so he lives from in different cities. We witness a crucial period of fracture in American history, one that allowed film noir to flourish. The dream has gone sad, but as these dark classic movies make clear, the country needed outsiders to dramatise its new anxieties. It's basically he's trying to piece himself together, but the world around him's falling apart. And the language in this is really good, so I'm excited. And this is beautiful. Shall I show you? That's probably the best view. I actually saw this in my local bookshop today and showed great self restraint. I didn't even pick it up. So. That's good. And then the next peer option is books I am currently reading. I'm currently reading a lot of books, but these are the books I'm currently reading that I'm like actively reading. So 
first is very appropriate. I'm going to university to study marine biology. I just spent three and a half weeks working on the boat off the coast of Italy on a whale and dolphin research project. And this is Spying on Whales, the Past, Present and Future of the World's Largest Animals by Nick Pison. And this literally does what it tells you. It's History of Whales. I'm currently in the past. I'm on page 61 and I love the writing of I've actually for the f so far I've known some of it but that's what I've gained from um, the work that I was doing this summer but even if you didn't it would be really easy to understand and if you're interested in whales I think it'd be interesting. I've also learned other things I didn't know before I think the back sums up really well. Why did it take whales over 50 million years to evolve to such sizes and how do they eat enough to stay that big? How did their ancestors move from the land to the sea and what do their lives tell us about our oceans and ultimately about the evolution of our planet? Most importantly, in, gr in the grand sweepstakes of human driven habitat and climate change will whales survive? This is written by... The guy is a creator of fossils, I'm going to guess right, of fossil marine mammals in the Smithsonian Institute, National Museum of Natural History. And the writing is really good. This is also, I think, beautiful underneath that spine and that little whale. Honestly, I was craving colours. Go back to the right thing. I was craving something to do with whales because like with the withdrawal symptoms I saw a sperm whale for the first time in my life when I was in Italy and just like blew me away and so I saw this literally two weeks after I got back into the country and had to buy it and it's been so good. Next is one that I've been going at for a long time since about January but I actually just got my own copy of it. This is Meetings with Remarkable Manuscripts by Christopher de Hamel. This is the history and the contents and theories of how they have happened of 12 different medieval manuscripts. I originally had this from the library and then I finally had to return it and ever since I started reading this I was like, I kept saying, you get, you can buy yourself this as a treat for passing your A-levels. Not really knowing if that would happen, but it did because it was £30, so I bought it myself as a treat. And I finished reading the next manuscript, so now I'm on manuscript number nine, which is The Hours of Jean de Navarre, second quarter of the 14th century. It is in the Bibliotheca Nationale de France in Paris, apparently at the moment, and it's just fascinating. I love history, especially medieval history, but also books, also writing and everything that's involved with that so for me this is a fascinating book. I never thought I would be interested in something like this but I saw it on the Waterstones email and I'm so happy I took the plunge and went to see if my library had it even though I thought they wouldn't but yeah it's the beautiful book and I'm there and it is filled with, I find you some of the best, the most amazing pictures of manuscripts. Okay, here's some. It probably won't do, won't do it justice, but because like, I got really excited because they had paperback version of this, but it was like probably like that big and the pictures are in black and white so I went and I treated myself to the massive expensive version and I can honestly say I do not regret it one bit. Okay and the next is a complete departure from the last two. We have A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. I'm sure I don't need to explain this. This is a high fantasy book which I actually don't know what, much of what it's about. I'm currently on page 12 just considering there's like nearly 800 pages in this book. I'm going, going strongly so far. But I just thought 
I might as well start it. I've had, I got a couple of these years ago before I even became massive. Um, but they, I didn't get given the first books. I got like this third book, which is split into two volumes. So I think they were present for my dad. And I think he thought he saw one and two and thought they were books one and two. So, yep. I'm excited to read I love some high fantasy. I don't tend, I've not really read much fantasy since I properly got back into reading. Especially not adult fantasy, but I read the prologue when I'm on the first chapter and the writing itself is just beautiful. Like, no one's like spoken about that really. I've always heard kind of mixed things about it, but I didn't really like the TV series. So I thought I would try the books and the writing is so good. And then more back on to nature. This is Winter by, please forgive the butchering, Karl of Knausgaard, which is, oops, can't lose my page, translated from the Norwegian by Ingvild Berkeley and illustrated by Lars Lerin. And this honestly has some gorgeous illustrations in it. This is non-fiction that I keep finding in the fiction. Just to really confuse me. Um, I like this at the back. Winter is the second of the season's quartet, a personal encyclopedia about the world written by a father to his unborn child. And basically each is divided into a month. I'm currently reading January. And each chapter each of those is then divided into a little section which is basically amusing on a topic so for the next one is the funeral procession procession then we have crows setting limits the crypt sexual desire thomas trains george toothbrushes the eye atoms blocky sugar but a lot of them are very philosophical and a lot of them are about nature and this the, again the writing in this is just absolutely beautiful i read autumn i picked up pretty much on a whim and oh my goodness i want to read everything he's written i'm trying to take it slowly and not rush through it but every time i pick this up i'm just even if i only read like 10 pages at a time it's just beautiful so I'm gradually going to wait, make my way through the rest of them. I've got spring and summer left after this and then I might have to see what other books he's written. I think I'm going to ask for the next one of those for my birthday because it's in October and like I'm, I'm going to be a student, I'm not going to be able to afford to buy new books but those are books I would love to own my own copies of because I know that in years to come I will continue to read them and love them. Okay, so the next book is, I may have gone on a little spree, which is the opposite of what I've been saying about the fact that I'm going to university so I'm not getting any money and I'm trying to be careful with the money that I have had saved up. It's not a lot, not a lot, not a lot, but if I'm careful it should be okay. I may have bought three books. They're all from the charge shop and they were two pounds each. And they're all books I've thought about buying. First is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dower, which I'm sure you've seen this and heard about this. So I finally bit the bullet. I've been wanting to read this for ages and I keep, like I've, the number of times I've picked this up and put it down again. This is about Two different people got Mary Lua, who is blind and lives in Paris. And the Nazis have invaded. And the other storyline is from Werner, a German author destined to labour in the mines. Don't know. I've just heard amazing things about it and I've wanted to read it for ages. I've not read any fiction set in world, the world wars for quite a while actually. Just trying to peel off the 
stickers. Oh no, don't leave sticky marks, please. Ha. Oh no, that peeled off a bit of the book. It's okay, it's a white. I should have done this before the video. Okay, next is The Tobacconist by Robert Seathler, which was translated by Charlotte Collins. I'm just checking that wasn't translated. No. And again, this is beautiful. I have such a thing for covers. I thought about buying this again. I'm just going to read you the summary because I'm not sure how to sum it up. 17 year old Franz leaves his home and idyllic beauty of the Austrian Lake District for the, hustle, the, for the bustle of Vienna. He is apprenticed to an elderly tobacco, tobacconist. Among those regular is a Professor Fraud whose predilection for cigars and occasional willingness to dispense romantic advice will forge a bond between him and young Franz. It is 1937. In a matter of months, Germany will annex Austri Austria and the storm. There has been threatening to engulf the little tobacconist would send leaving the lives of Franz to everyone he knows irredeemably changed. So I've got two books set in the same time period that sound completely different. Then the last one is I think this might actually be a children. This might I think this is meant to be a teens book. But Sky Song by Abby Alfinston. This is about the snowy kingdom of Erkenwald, where whales glide under, between icebergs, dwarves hunt in the tundra, and polar bears roam the glaciers. But the people of this land aren't so easy to find, because Erkenwald is ruled by an evil ice queen, and the tribes must stay hidden for risk becoming her prisoners at Winterfeng Palace. Join Esker, a girl who breaks free from a cursed music box, and Flint Boy, whose inventions could change the fate of Erkenwald forever. As they journey to the Never Cliffs and beyond in search of all ancient, almost forgotten song with the power to force the ice cream back. This is a story about an eagle huntress, an inventor, and an organ made of icicles. But it is also a story about belonging even at the edges of our world. That just sounds fabulous and again beautiful. And we've got covered edges. So, yeah, and this is again quite short, so they're the tobacco list. They're short little books, so that's what I'm going to read when I've read those. I've also got a short segment I'm calling Get Yourself in Gear Image, and you have lots of magazines and you need to read them because you love them. Okay, I'm back. Though you might not have noticed, there was a brief interruption. I had to go and do something with my mum. Okay, what we're doing, we're talking about magazines. I can't remember where we got to. So we'll just start at the beginning. Okay, the first one is Tank, which I bought myself that I've never had before. And it seems to be about a lot of other, th lots of things, including about books. I don't know if you can see, but some of those pages are yellow. Like, like all of these are yellow, which means they're like about books. And then there's little bits of other things. So I got this as a trial and I'm part way through. In my page 83 so far. And I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna see how I feel about the rest of this. I have a bad habit of buying magazines and not finishing them or starting them. Then I've got King Tut and the Golden Age Pharaohs, which is National Geographic that my mum got me for when I went away. I never got around to reading it because the whole thing was so mad while I was there. I literally had barely any time off. This will be really interesting and I really like the Egyptians. And then we have a copy of ID, which is a magazine I have a subscription to because my dad lets me have a magazine subscription, which he pays for. And this is my one and I really love this. This is about fashion and art and film and music and culture and everyone has an issue. As every issue has a theme. This is for the fall 2018. Good planets are hard to find. The Earth-wise issue. 
so that should be interesting. And again, like tank, these are like small books, it's like yeah, me 300 pages long. The same with tank, which is again almost exactly like in the 280s. Then we have New Philosopher Play Matters. This one that I took away with me to Italy and I have read some of it. I'm on page 38. I've had an issue with this before and I'd liked it but I hadn't loved it and I thought this one sounded really interesting. But I don't think I'm going to get another issue with this. For curious people looking for solutions to the fundamental issues faced by humankind. And it's just different people writing on a topic. Yeah. Like it, don't love it, so probably won't get another issue. This one I didn't take away, but I took away a couple of issues from an issue from this. I think it might have been two issues from before, because I think I was away from when one of them came out. This is O'Cumley that I've heard so many people talk about, but I'd never bought for myself, and I absolutely loved it, so I bought myself the next issue when I came back, but I've not, I've like read the first maybe 20 pages of this. So I need to get around to this. And then we have Aesthetica, which is a... If you didn't know, this has got bits of writing. It, can, it talks about books, but it also talks about like cultural things. It does talk a bit about fashion. Experience, makers, culture, curiosity and ideas, other categories. So, yeah. And the last one is Aesthetica, which I bought as a treat to myself in January. This is an art magazine. It mainly talks about art and photography, photography and architecture, but there are some culture things in here. There are also some book reviews, some music reviews and some film reviews normally at the end. It talks about exhibitions and artists and yeah has some gorgeous photography in it always and I got this at uh, the turn of contemporary which is in Margate originally <coughs> a few quite a while ago in like October maybe of that in October maybe of last year so I got myself a subscription because it's hard to find and I really enjoy it we often talk about sustainability as well so I love this this was here for when I this got arrived when I was away initially so I've had it for a few weeks I've just not got around to it yet but I will because I love reading these so that is it a lot of reading, not much time. Isn't that always the case? So, yeah. Here we go. Let's let's have a look at it. The ridiculousness of what I expect I will read. I never read this much. I don't even like TBRs that much, but I thought I might this one feels a bit different. So here we go. Oh my goodness, now I'm seeing it in wool, it looks ridiculous. Let's hope I can do this. Because I want to read all these, they're so good. Well, bye. I'll see you next time. Hopefully I can film a couple of things while I'm here still, but otherwise the next time you see me I might be in a completely different room. Sadly I won't have all my bookcases. That is a video I'm going to film before I go. I'm going to film a books I'm taking to university because I've seen books I'm taking to college videos before because a lot of the booktubers I found that are my age tend to be um, American. So I'm going to do books I'm going to take to university. So, thank you for watching if you've got this far because it's going to be really long because I'm yet to film a video this short so here we go bye 
hope to see you again. Subscribe if you want to. Like if you would, please. Because I'm a baby YouTuber, basically. I have, like, no subscribers and no viewers, so... Give me some love. I need it. I'm struggling here. Be nice, please. Okay. Bye. I'll see you next time.